You're watching WKYC, Channel 3, Cleveland. And now, news from Liz Habib and Tony Harris. Exclusive Doppler 3 forecasts from Eileen McShay and Chuck Galetti on sports. This is Channel 3 News. I mean, the shots were that close. I mean, flying over our heads, and, and it, was, it, was, it, it shook us up. It shook me up. I'm still shaking. A witness describes a gun battle that erupts in Waco, Texas today, and the dangerous situation there is not over yet. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tony Harris. And I'm Liz Habib. Our top story tonight, a second gun battle erupted within the hour at a compound where members of a religious cult are holed up. Three cult mem members came out shooting. One is dead, one was captured, and one retreated. As John Garcia reports earlier, four federal agents were gunned down trying to arrest the leader of the cult. By late afternoon, law enforcement officials were bringing in reinforcements from the military and from area police department SWAT units. More than 100 officers to surround the complex with heavy firepower. From a former member of the cult whose parents remain inside, this plea to cult leader Vernon Howell. Look around them and realize what they're up against. Uh, lay down your arms and, uh, and come out and uh, put an end to this before it gets any worse. Even as officials attempted to negotiate with cult members by telephone, ATF agents mourned the loss of four of their own. Fourteen others were wounded, some seriously. It was difficult to accept, even for seasoned law enforcement professionals. Our hearts go out to those, to these brave agents <clears throat> who died today in the line of duty, and to their families. Today's events point out, up, today's events point up to the fact that federal law enforcement officers across America place their lives on the line every minute. Newspaper reporter Mark McFerrer was on hand to cover the raid as agents tried to serve warrants at the compound about 9.30 this morning. When the gunfire started, he also became a target. I mean, the shots were that close. I mean, flying over our heads, and, and it, was, it, was, it, it shook us up. It shook me up. I'm still shaking. This isn't the first time there has been trouble at the compound, which houses the Branch Davidians cult. But this time, officials seem determined to bring it to an end. The man is, is definitely a danger to the people in the compound and to himself. Cult leader Vernon Howell claims to have more than 75 members inside the compound. He says they are heavily armed, and at this point, it appears to have become a battle of wills. Reporting near Waco, John Garcia for NBC News. Now, 11 of the wounded ATF agents are hospitalized. Three have been treated and released. Two helicopters, a TV news van, and newspaper photographer's car were also hit by gunfire. It's official. A bomb caused the deadly explosion at the World Trade Center. Five people were killed, one is still missing, and over a thousand people were hurt. This is what it looks like two stories below ground in the Trade Center. Investigators believe the bomb went off somewhere in this location. And just like putting a, a cherry bomb in a sealed can, the pressure had nowhere to go. It went up, it went down, it went sideways. The power is still off in the Twin Towers. Water lines are ruptured. The World Trade Center will be closed for at least a week. And the investigation into who planted the bomb and why could take two to three months. Eight children and a 19-year-old mother died today in a fire in a Michigan apartment house. All the children were under age six, except a 13-year-old babysitter who was watching four of the children. It happened in Lettington, in the west central part of Michigan. Fire crews say everyone was trapped in two upstairs apartments and the fire spread so quickly that by the time the fire trucks got there, it was too late. One man managed to get out in time. His wife and three children are among the victims. And a fire on Cleveland's west side destroyed several buildings today and trapped a 63-year-old woman in a stairway. She was res rescued and is okay tonight. Seven fire companies fought the fire at West 41st and Lorraine. This is amateur video of the fire. It spread quickly through Mitchell's Photography, a paint shop, and a restaurant. Investigators don't know what caused the fire. Damages total $100,000. Police from Cleveland's western suburbs raided a house in West Lake today and found what they believe was an illegal drug laboratory. Channel 3's Obi Shelton says the agents got more than they expected. Acting on a tip from a neighbor, Members of the West Shore Enforcement Bureau, Webb, surrounded this house armed with heavy SWAT gear. We stormed the house, uh, announced police officers, search warrant, and then proceeded to break the doors in to gain entry to the house. 
Five men living here were arrested. They were all between 30 and 40 years old. Police expected to find marijuana, but instead found a homemade laboratory in the basement with lots of chemicals. Drug enforcement agents were called from Detroit and Chicago. Agents believe the men were making a drug here that's called crank on the streets. Crank, it's like synthetic crack cocaine. There were no shots fired during the raid, but one officer was injured. One officer was treated and released from West Shore Hospital for inhalation of the fumes. There's uh, very strong fumes in the house, and he experienced burning of his chest and his eyes. That officer had rushed to the attic, where police believe the finished product was drying, crank rocks. Agents say making the drug is dangerous. It could explode any time. A chemist flew in from Chicago to spend most of the night in the house and analyze the chemicals before the five men can be charged. Obi Shelton, Channel 3 News. Those charges are not expected to be filed until Tuesday. While people at Mass in Little Italy tonight remembered the man they called the Mayor of Murray Hill. He died yesterday after a hit-and-run car accident. All of us who live here in this neighborhood are touched and moved and deeply grieved now as we recall one who meant so much to us. Fior Dicenzo, a mildly retarded man, used to love to ring the bells at Holy Rosary Church. Even after they automated the bells, he was the one who pushed the button to turn them on. His friends and neighbors say they just can't believe he's gone. I've been in the community for 37 years, and I've known Fior since I was a little girl, and he will be missed. He was just a good man, and the only thing that I'm concerned about is that I hope this man that took my brother's life, that the state and city and whoever takes over his case, he gets the punishment he deserves. Desenzo was carried 80 feet before falling off the car. Witnesses followed the car into Cleveland Heights. That's where 29-year-old Charles Redeemer was arrested and charged with aggravated vehicular homicide. He was driving on a suspended license and was legally drunk at the time of the accident. Convicted Nazi death camp guard John Demjanjuk will go on a hunger strike tomorrow. Demjanjuk says he's tired of waiting for a decision on his appeal. He's been in prison in Israel now for eight years. Demjanjuk was convicted in 1988 of being Ivan the Terrible. He claims he is a victim of mistaken identity. Hearings on his appeal ended last June. Israel says its Supreme Court is working on a verdict. Hollywood is mourning two of its own tonight. Silent film great Lillian Gish died last night at her home in Manhattan. Her manager, James Frazier, says she died in her sleep. Gish was 99. Her film career spanned 75 years. It started with one and two reelers in 1912 and ended in 1987 with the movie The Whales of August. Lillian Gish was born in Springfield, Ohio. And dancer-actress Ruby Keeler died today in Rancho Mirage, California, of cancer. Keeler starred in a string of 1930s musicals, starting with 42nd Street. She was married to singer Al Jolson. Her family says there'll be a memorial service Tuesday. Ruby Keeler was 83. A new study contradicts that body shape affects a woman's risk for breast cancer. The story next. And Rex Humbard comes back to the Cathedral of Tomorrow. We'll meet Tanya Kwiatkowski on her way to the World Skating Championships. And the Cavs take on the league's best. Stay with us. A new study tonight contradicts the notion that body shape affects a woman's risk for breast cancer. Researchers say instead of worrying about pear or apple-shaped bodies, women should focus more on controlling their amount of body fat. Scientists at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center say it was suggested women who carried their weight around their waist were more at risk than pear-shaped women who bulge at the hips and thighs. But this study found no connection between shape and breast cancer, but the more fat you have could be a risk factor. A Texas researcher says tonight that many Americans are ignorant about the dangers of drinking alcohol in the later stages of pregnancy. The study by an advocacy group for the mentally retarded finds most Americans know it's dangerous to drink during the first trimester, but only about half know it's also dangerous during the rest of the pregnancy. Drinking during pregnancy can cause fetal alcohol syndrome. It's the leading cause of preventable mental retardation. Evangelist Rex Humbard is back at his Cathedral of Tomorrow in Cuyahoga Falls. 
He's 73 years old now. He built the 5,000-seat, $18 million church in 1958. When I was a little boy, my mom and dad came to this church, and they helped build this church. At one time, Humbard preached on radio and 650 television stations around the world. But the Humbards moved to Florida. Attendance went down, and the cathedral went into debt. Humbard's foundation was sued, charged with taking money that belonged to the cathedral. The suit was just settled, and the current leaders quit. They say Humbard wants to sell the property. Whatever goes on here, and to see that this remains a church until the Lord comes or until I die. Humbard plans to air videotapes of thousands of old TV broadcasts he's done over the years. Lakewood's Lisa Irvin will not be alone when she competes at the World Ice Skating Championships in Prague, Czechoslovakia. Tanya Kwiatkowski of, of Broadview Heights also made the world team. Tonight in Dreams on Ice, Lisa Kalagrasi introduces us to the very determined skater. <laughs> This is Tanya Kwiatkowski at the U.S. Figure Skating Championships in Phoenix. She came in third, good enough to send her to the World Championships in Prague. But by the look of quiet determination on her face, you can tell she wants more. Now make it good and sharp, honey. That's it. Good. That's it. Good eye contact. Excellent. Now you better push. Come on, push! One, two, three, four! Stay smooth! Tanya has been under the watchful coaching eye of Carol Heiss Jenkins since she was eight years old. She was one of Carol's first students. Tanya's been skating beautifully these weeks leading up to Worlds. Her graceful moves are in sync, and her triple jump is solid as a rock. There is plenty riding on these world championships because if any one of the three American skaters, Nancy Kerrigan, Lisa, or Tanya, places in the top three, that will allow the United States to take three skaters to the 1994 Olympics instead of two. Now, there is still a qualifying round for the Olympics, but the chances are very good that Lisa and Tanya would both make the Olympic team. Tanya is 22 years old, so this could be her last shot at the Olympic dream a dream her parents have fully supported. It's a very expensive sport, and you always worry where the money is going to come from. It, it, it just, I don't know, things do fall into place, and you always make ends meet. We've kept cars for longer than what we should have, and uh, had to put a little extra money into them to keep them going, and uh, I've worked a lot of overtime. And This will be Tanya's first time at the World Championships. She's not as well known as her two other teammates, so there's not as much pressure on her, and that's good. It's, it's kind of better being a dark horse because no one really expects anything, and you know, if you do it, it's like, wow, where did she come from? And that, that'd be great. Tanya certainly has the ability to surprise the world and achieve her dream on ice. Lisa Calagrasse, Channel 3 News. Tanya's mother will go to Prague with her. Her father is staying at home, recovering from heart surgery. The finals of the World Championships can be seen here on Channel 3, March 18th at 1 o'clock. And I'm sure Mr. Kwiatkowski will be watching. Isn't that going to be great to watch them on television now that, now that we know them a little better? It's so It'll nice. Be yeah, right oh. from our area. Do well, yeah. ladies. A beautiful day today, plenty of sunshine. But what will the new week bring? Eileen is up next with the Back to Work Doppler 3 forecast. And a little later, a little fuzzy first. We'll explain. Stay with us.